Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're taking a look at this pen. Uh, this is from Desiderata Pen Company and it is the Sober K. So a little bit of history on this. I have known the maker uh, from Desiderata, Pierre, for several years. Probably like, I don't know, three years ago or so I met him in Chicago. Uh, we were like hanging out at the bar. He's a good dude. We uh, struck up a conversation. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really like seeing that guy at pen shows ever since. So um, the thing about his pens are he's he started off making making these kind of, they're, you know, sort of uniform shape, black ebonite, which is good stuff. Uh, and they're usually fitted with zebra G nibs. Uh, if you're not familiar with zebra G nibs, and I don't have one here to show, um, they're a flex nib that's usually used for uh, dip pen writing. So you get your, you know, dip pen holder, you put a zebra G nib in there, you write for a while. And then those nibs eventually will sort of degrade, right? They rust. They're not meant to last all that long. They break. Um, but they give you really cool, uh, you know, uh, spreading tine, uh, flexi action. And so it's cool that you can get them on a fountain pen sometimes. And so Desiderato is making them. I think he called it the Daedalus, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that's just not really, it's not really my jam. I'm not any good at flex writing. And so it's just not really for me. And so I'm like, Pierre's a neat, a neat guy, but he's not making stuff that I'm super into. And then in Atlanta, I was like, hey, Pierre, what are you making these days? And he had these, um, these big cases full of cool pens. And they were all like swirly acrylics. And he had ebonites. And he had woods. He's been using Coca Bolo. He's been using like just all kinds of cool stuff. And I said, all right, tell me about these. So um, this is much more up my alley. And um, this is the Desiderata Sober K. So we're gonna look at this today. It is, doesn't have ink in it at the moment. I have been using this since since Atlanta. So that's like a month and a half, maybe, maybe two months. Anyway, I got to get this back to him. Uh, this is a loner, by the way, of course. And uh, so here's here's this pen. This is uh, called Moonstone Water Acrylic is what he calls this one. And this pen comes in at 265. Now this style of pen, the Sober K, will range from about 200 up to uh, 265. This is like the top end. And it's probably because there's so much extra work done in polishing and all that kind of stuff when you make a transparent pen like this. So first thing to notice is it's a fairly large pen. It doesn't yeah, I was reading his description. He's saying he wanted to make a big pen that didn't feel big. And I think he definitely did that because until I started putting this next to a bunch of other pens, like here it is next to a Diplomat Arrow. Like it's bigger than an arrow. And I think of an arrow as being a fairly large pen, but the Sober K is actually bigger, but in the hand, it actually feels smaller, I think. Um, and you'll notice that the top end is blunt. The bottom end is tapered. So you have this nice blunt to taper sort of fit. Uh, it is pretty well cylindrical, I think, through here and doesn't really change widths. Actually, let me check right quick. Bring this out. I didn't think to check this before, but oh, there's the on button. Cool. Okay, so let's start here and just see if it gets smaller. So 13.4, 13.3, 2, 1. Oh, it is getting, it is tapering, but it's, oops, I, I slipped off this flat bit. Let's try this again. 4, 3, 2, yeah, all right, so this does have a distinct taper to it that you really can't see, especially in this pen with all the swirly bits, but it does actually taper a little bit as it goes, which is kind of fun. Like, unless you use a caliper, uh, I, I wouldn't have noticed. So anyway, you got that sort of style. You've also got this nice clip. It's a very minimal sort of clip. This is just a piece of steel, right? And this is just a piece of uh, stainless steel. It won't rust. There's no plating on it or anything like that. It is secured inside here with one pin hole and there's a screw that goes up from the top that secures this pen. It's not coming out. I've uh, clipped this on all kinds of things. It's got a very nice ramp here at the end. Uh, and it's got enough flex that you can bend this without wrecking it. And also, uh, it'll, you know, it snaps back to, to form. I've put this on jeans, I've put it on shirt pockets, I've put it on the plackets of shirts. That's how I carry pens a lot of times, is in a placket. Uh, especially if it screws on, I'm, I'm confident in it. And this uh, this this uh, clip has done well for all of those things. Um, so, when you open it up, not terribly many turns to, to open. Probably a turn and a half, I'd say. One, yeah, about a turn and a half, turn and a quarter. And then this is the grip section of this pen. So we have a nice, uh, nice taper here. There you go. You can see that actually better, I think. Nice taper there. This is actually a very, very comfortable section coming in around uh, 9.7 to 11.9, depending on where you are between here. So it's of course thinnest here by the by the flare, and then as you get up here to the threads, it gets up to almost 12 millimeters. So it's a fairly large. Um, 
really large diameter, which I actually like a lot. I tend to actually hold it right here sort of in the middle. So that's probably right around my comfort zone of like 10 and a half is probably about what's going on there. Uh, but this nice ramp here lets you hold it no matter where you want to hold it. It's good. Also, I should mention these threads are very, very nice, smooth threads. I mean, you're in your finger across them. You can kind of, I can feel it, but like, just like this, forget about it. It feels great. So uh, very nice threads. Good job on that one. And he like hand makes all this stuff. It's pretty amazing. Um, I have in here, as you'll notice, not a Zebra G nib, but a Yovo number six. Uh, he offered to give me a Zebra G and I'm like, look, Pierre, I'm not going to be able, I'll talk about mechanics and like hand feel and all that stuff, but I am crap at flex writing. So it'd just be wasted on me. Um, so he set this up and uh, it's a, you know, perfectly good uh, Yovo fine nib. Uh, he's got them in all the sizes and that sort of thing. But Yovo nibs are really good. I I like them a lot. It's my favorite, like, you know, um, uh, large maker sort of nib. Uh, so nib and feed, this is actually unscrews here. Let's go ahead and take this out. So the other thing he's done is he has added a breather tube to the end of the, uh, the end of this, this pen here. Uh, so there's been some customing done even to this, uh, just this like screw and nib unit. And that's because the filling system in here is pretty neat and uh, it kind of needs this breather tube thing to work very well. So uh, you just put this back in there and this will of course uh, take whatever screw in you want as well as his Zebra G nibs. All right, so there we go. We've got the, uh, the the cap and all that jazz. This is what that looks like. Now here's the end of this pen, which is pretty darn cool. This bit unscrews, set that aside, this little torpedo. This is actually a blind cap, right? It's a pretty big blind cap. It's most of the, it's like half the pen, but uh, the rest of this is actually sort of where the ink goes. And this is what he calls a uh, piston vacuumatic, and it's all custom made. He makes these things. So this is ebonite ends. This is a swirly sort of ebonite here with a nice spring in there. And then let me see if I can get there, this side. This side has the piston. You can see it really working in there. And you can see this is where it stops. I was actually cleaning this out. I think there's a little bit of um, like silicone grease probably from the, the piston that's caught some blue ink in there. I've, I've been using this with Pilot Blue. Perfectly serviceable, but not super exciting blue, if I'm honest. Uh, and uh, yeah, look at that. So when you want to fill this pen, you just submerge this in ink and then just work this piston until it's full of, full of, uh, full of ink. Pretty cool, right? I mean, this is, this is great. And actually, it's a bit like, uh, in fact, it's pretty much just like the thing that you get on the Twisby Go. So this is the Twisby Go, and I'm not going to do that because this one has ink in it. It would be a mess, but uh, long throw piston rod here, big spring, uh, and a... Uh no, I'm not going to do it. I'll make a mess. Uh, you'll squirt ink out of here if you're not careful. Uh, but the same kind of thing, but um, I think done much more tastefully in the Sober K. But, uh, you know, by one dude who's got a sense of style and a sense of uh, sort of like engineering know-how. So it's a shorter piston, relatively smaller ink volume, I suppose. But he says it holds a mill and a half of ink, which is a fair amount of ink. And you get a really nice, um, I've been able to get almost full fills with this. And if I knew what I was doing, I could probably get full fills. Uh, just, you know, just put it in there, work this until it's full. And uh, that's all there is to filling this thing. This doesn't seem to come out. I wouldn't want to try to take this out um, I suppose you could, but you're not really going to need to. If you want to gr grease the piston, uh, you can take it out from this side. Just put a little bit of um, silicone you know, grease stuff back here if you have to. But it, you shouldn't need to. It should be fine. Um, so, yeah, this has worked out really well. And um, I, I think this is actually a really nice pen. So uh, instead of doing a writing sample, because, frankly, this is using a, a Yovo number 6 nib, and uh, those are darn good nibs, and everybody pretty much knows how, knows how they write. You get one of these adjusted right, and Pierre will, of course, adjust it for you. Um, then, um, you know, it's going to write well. Lots of the major makers use this thing, and it's great. So there we go. Now let's look at it next to a whole bunch of other pens right quick, just so you get a sense of size and dimension. All right, so here it is next to a bunch of different things, um, sort of going smallest to largest. You can see it's over here next to the Conalea and the Twisby 700, which are pretty darn big pens, and it's right about the same length as those guys. So uh, down here we have the Sailor Pro Gear, which is a fairly smallish pen. Uh, let's see, here I have a Franklin Christoph 45. And go full on pocket there. Uh, so Pro Gear uh, 45. The Sailor Pro Gear, the Lamy 2000, everybody's uh, got one of these. If you don't, you should. It's a great pen. Uh, next to it, the Lamy Safari, which uh, pretty much everybody has in their collection, I imagine. It's a very standard size pen, slightly smaller than the Sober K. Uh, then this is the Platinum 3776, the Sailor 1911 Large. This is the big one. Uh, then you've got the Desiderata Sober K. Then you've got the Twisby 700 Vac and the Conalea Mauna Kea as a big cylinder of a pen there. So you can see this pen actually does have a good amount of size to it. 
it. But in the hand, it just feels great and you don't feel that size. You feel like you've got a good size pen in your hand, but not one that's, you know, not big. Like these are, this is kind of a big pen, no matter how you make it or no, no matter what size your hand is. Like the Conley is a big chunky pen. The Sober K feels much, um, much smaller, I would say. Actually, let's go ahead and do a, uh, let's do caps off here. All right, there we go. So uh, with the caps off, you can see that pens like they change their length based on the cap and all those kinds of dimensions. Sober K kind of keeps it in line with the 700 and with the uh, the Conalea, but for whatever reason, again, it feels smaller in the hand. It's very comfortable. Uh, and uh, there you go. So um, stick around for dimensions after I finish talking here. I'll throw those up at the end of the video instead of putting them right here in the middle. But uh, suffice to say, this is a very nicely made pen. The fit and finish is great. I think the, uh, I, I like the uh, being able to see the barrel or see into the barrel. There are like Coca Bolo ones and full on ebonites and all kinds of interesting things. I think it's nice to be able to see this work. Um, I think some of them are made with like a sleeve on the outside you can take off and you can see things. But anyway, he's got a bunch of versions of this pen and it's definitely worth going to his site, desideratapens.com and, uh, you know, see what he's got going on there because these are cool pens. I, I really, man, I like having, I like not having any ink in here because this is just a very satisfying feeling. Like that spring, you can feel the slight resistance from the piston there as it's going through the barrel. It's uh, it's very cool. So if you like interesting filling systems and you like the idea that there's a dude named Pierre who made this thing, uh, including the filling system and stuff, this is a great pen, and I suggest you definitely check it out. So go over to desideratapens.com. Uh, tell Pierre I said hi when you order yours. There are a bunch of different styles, and they seem to come and go as he makes them. He'll be at the Chicago Pen Show this weekend. I'll be at the Chicago Pen Show this weekend. Um, come say hi and see us, and I will see y'all later. Peace out.